If you love rock music, if you love history, if you're a fan of all the amazing people and places in Toronto GTA, this podcast is a must listen. I had the opportunity, the pleasure to sit down with Ryan Mangano, who, along with his father, Basil, are both the owners of the Linsmore Tavern, established in 1934, and have adapted this property, which has an incredibly unique and interesting history. Wait till you hear these stories from Ryan. They're amazing. And it's become the rock the local rock concert hub of the East End. And for a lot of people across the city, it's the only place uh, they want to go. I've been there numerous times and I enjoy going every time. It's such a great show. It's such a great uh, feeling. It's, it's, it's a small venue, but it, it, it brings you right. Like you're right on that stage. You're as close as you could ever be way more enjoyable than the giant stadiums as far as I'm concerned. For me, as a lifelong fan of music, places like this are what we need to support. So that's what this podcast is designed to do, to help support Ryan and Basil at the Linsmore Tavern and keep them going for more years, more decades, maybe another hundred. We'll see. But for now, enjoy this podcast. And if you've got an interesting place or property that I should be talking about here, make sure you reach out to me. Realestatepodcastshow.com is the place where it all begins. Four, three, two, one. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever in the world you guys are. I just wanted to welcome everybody back to the first new virtual podcast interview uh, since the studios moved and it's been about, uh, about 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 a month or so now trying to get things in order still working out the 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 the, the blips uh, of, of of setting up a studio uh, but as far as I can tell the best thing to do is just say you know when you're, when you're close enough just go for it so my first guest back um, for this to me this is one of the favorite things that I can uh, possibly do is I love music and, and those of you out there who love music as well um, may or may not know this gentleman but uh, once you hear the story uh, you've either heard of the gentleman or about the place that uh, his family owns and I want to welcome Ryan Mangano um, hope, hope I pronounced that right I don't think yep, I pronounced perfect. your last name before perfect uh, I've got well. an old last name too so I, I probably would get it close uh, so Ryan thank you so much for joining me uh, let everybody know a little bit about uh, you and of course your historic rock venue yeah thanks Paul for having me and uh, yeah as, as Paul was explaining um, my family's uh, own the Linsmore Tavern since 1982. Uh, my dad, uh, Basil, uh, bought the place right when I was a baby. I was a baby in 19, I was born in August of 1982. My dad bought the Linsmore uh, a few months after I was born. Happy birthday. Holy um, crap. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I just, I just turned 40. So we, he's, yeah. he's owned it for 40 years. Wow. Um, there was a, one owner before him. Um, uh, his name was Lou Campbell. That's who he bought it from. Yeah. Um, Lou Campbell, uh, I guess the Linsmore first opened in 1934. So Lou owned it for 48 years. And then my dad owned it for, has owned it for 40. Okay. Um, and, and so, yeah, there's a lot of history behind the place. Um, we're one of the oldest, I believe, taverns or bars in, in, in Ontario and in Toronto. Um, there's not too many of these kind of old school taverns left remaining yeah, uh, for yeah. Toronto. I, I think I agree. I agree. You no, know, I, I think you didn't. You do an interview with the owner of the Brunswick House. That's one. Well, of the old, no, yeah, uh, uh, not the park. owner, but the daughter of the former. And and man, you you got a good memory. The daughter of the former one of the singers that was there okay. um, um, on uh, I think it was Thursday nights. I was there Thursday night, and the singers were there. Um, it was the little guy. And then it was um, Rock and Irene, and it was Rock right. and Irene's daughter that joined me. So she 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 was the history book for that place, as far as I could tell. So you're absolutely right. I I love 
um, the stories behind these venues and the fact that you guys are still, you know, up and running and, and not just up and running, but evolving. Cause as we were discussing before, um, you know, it wasn't always what it is now. So obviously in the forties, yeah. it was something completely different. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nobody knows yeah. who's in yeah. there, <laughs> all sorts of crazy activity. Yeah. 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 Well, back then they used to have, so if you go, if you, if people, for people that have been in the Lindsmore before, there's like a back room. And back in, in, in like the 40s and the 50s, um, uh, there was like a side entrance and then a front entrance. And the side entrance and, and the back room would be for, for ladies and escorts. And then uh, the front entrance would be for, for the men that would come in. And then there was rooms like rented by the night where you could, yeah. No pretty much go up there with, yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, that no was how it was no back. graphics or extra explanation <laughs> yeah. requires stuff happened back then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and so the, the windows used to be um, stained glass. So people can't look into the windows back in those days, the wives of the, the men that were going in and drinking in the forties and fifties couldn't, couldn't see what was going on in, in, in the tavern. And yeah, so that, that was kind of the, the old days. Um, when my dad took it over in 82, um, it was still kind of one of those local um, taverns. You come in, get a tray of, of a cheap draft. And um, I still remember as a kid going in there with my dad because he was playing in the, the local basketball league um, at Monarch Park, like a, a men's league. And oh, nice, every, yeah. every Saturday, um, he pretty he sponsored that league. It was, I think it was called Pape Basketball League. It was like a men's league. And so all the basketball players would come by and buy trays and there's shuffleboard and pool and, and darts and a lot of smoking. Yeah. Um, so I remember as a kid going in there and, and just loving the kind of the atmosphere. Cause it was like, you know, it's like a, a real like pub tavern type of feel to it. And uh, it, was, so you, it used to be busy back then, actually, like, in, you know, in the, in the late. So you, you grew up in that, basically you grew up in that bar atmosphere, you know, age, age, irregardless, you were in there as a kid. I I, then, yeah. I I would go like I wasn't going in all the time, but no. I would whenever my like I'd go to watch my dad play basketball on the weekends, and I yeah. come I'd come there afterwards, and absolutely yeah. yeah so yeah yeah I pop by, and I just always kind of thought it was a co really cool place and atmosphere to to kind of be in. Um, then you know as the years gone by, um, kind of that that clientele that we had, we had a really like loyal local clientele that would come in it kind of started to um it, it kind of slowed down a bit um yeah. we kind of let the place down a little bit uh in a way uh where um you know we didn't put much mo money in renovations in there and um yeah it, it, the smoking laws i think in 2001 um i think it was 2001 where before you're allowed to smoke in, 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 in bars and, mm -hmm. and, and restaurants. And I think yeah. 2001, they made it illegal. Yeah. Um, so that really took a hit on our business because we had a lot of smokers that would come in and, and drink and smoke. And, and so things started to kind of slow down. We still had kind of a loyal, regular clientele and, and, and following that would come in, but we weren't getting people outside of our, our regulars coming in for, for a long time because it, it, you know, it had kind of a, um, kind of like a dive bar feel to it a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of yeah. people were a little, little intimidated by it, um, and then other people did, you know, love that dive bar feel. So we would get the odd person that would come in that would be like, "Oh, this is so cool." Um, um, so yeah, that was kind of how it was, and then, um, and then that regular clientele, that loyal following that we had, you know, the smokers and heavy drinkers, they, they started to get older and. And some of them passed away. Yeah. And so um, in 2010, I, I came in. I started working there, you know, with kind of the the idea of taking over the place. And uh, at that time, you know, I, I just remember, um, like, it was we had a regular clientele, but we couldn't get anyone in the, in, the, in the neighbor to to come in. Yeah. Really. And yeah. And you you should know, you know as a real estate agent in the Danforth at that time, 2010, it was starting to really gentrify the area and, and, you know, new people, new families, younger I, people. I, I remember it. I remember it well. I remember, um, 
you know, the, the early 2000s being very um, transitory, very like very like a lot yeah. of transition like that decade was just huge for, you know, things going on. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. 2010 too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that was happening. And, I, and, and you know, we didn't put we, again, we it was still kind of we had this. Actually, this is kind of interesting. Do you remember the movie The Ladies Man? with um what's his name tim um, meadows tim meadows yeah yeah, yeah. good memory tim yeah. meadows will ferrell was in it and basically the movie was like based in the like this guy was was, was like he was a like 1970s like the way he dressed uh pimp kind of yeah and he he drank at a dive bar like a real dive bar and it, it, it was a classic scene in the movie yeah. Well, anyways, they they used the Linsmore to film that movie. Was that right? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it was film. It was filmed in the Linsmore. I think that movie came out around ninety nine or two thousand. Yeah. So, anyways, that was kind of the the, the shape, the, the the dive bar, you know that that the Linsmore was back then. Like, where yeah. a movie that was a, a really funny movie. Anyone should go see it or rent it. Or, or I didn't. Or I didn't know it. there was a Danforth a connection to that movie. That's that's one thing I've always sort of tried to make notes of for people yeah. as I'm doing tours. Obviously, I've, it's always I've always included even before I knew you. Uh, I always sort of did a little bit of a blurb about the lens more, but um, again, wanting to learn more and, and getting to know yeah. you and obviously having you tell the stories even better. Um, so that's awesome that there's a, a movie connection there. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was filmed, it was filmed at the lens more in, in Toronto and at the Greenwood subway station. Um, yeah. There's a couple, there's a few photos around. I think I've posted them on, you know, our, our, our pages before. Nice. Um, but yeah, so then when I took over in 2000, like 2010, I started working, then I eventually took over. Um, we started to kind of figure out, okay, how are we going to get this place busy again, get people in from the neighborhood? And, and, and so I started, I started working, learning about the, you know, the area a bit and, and the customers and started trying a lot of different things. You know, we brought in TVs and tried to make it a sports bar and um, we you know, were doing pool leagues, billiard leagues, dart leagues, um, karaoke. Uh, we even tried something called sexy bingo. You know what that is? No. So it's like bingo. You're playing bingo. And instead of winning money, you'd win sex toys. Okay. <laughs> so we're trying stuff like that. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad <laughs> that didn't work so well for you. Cause that, that would have been a completely different direction. <laughs> uh, if that oh this is working great let's let's go to the next level i don't know i, I wouldn't want to know what the next level of that <laughs> yeah it was yeah. It, it was it was tough like i i was trying everything and i was getting my i would get my friends to come in sometimes but again you can't rely on your friends to come in every night so we we're trying a lot of stuff to get people from the neighborhood in and it just wasn't working and then one day um some guy came into the bar and he said, Hey, I, I play in a band. I live in the neighborhood. I love to love to play your place. And I'm like, okay, sure. Come on in, you know, a couple weeks from now on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so there's, so a couple weeks later, this band comes in and uh, I don't remember the name of the band and they were got off. They were the worst band ever. They're <laughs> terrible, <laughs> awful. And if you, if, if, they, if this guy ends up listening, I'm really sorry. <laughs> But yeah, uh, okay. yeah I, I'm not going to say the name of the band because I don't remember it, but they okay. were very, very bad. And um, so they played and then all of a sudden they, they started to set up and all of a sudden all these young people from the neighborhood came in and yeah. women were coming in. Like before we didn't get young, young women at all in the bar. Are you sure it wasn't Spinal Tap? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Could have been. Yeah. Yeah. Been. No. But they're, they're so, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, they came in and they had all these young people in and they're drinking and dancing. And it was like, wow, this is okay. This worked out really well. We were busy. We did great sales and stuff and it was a fun night. Yeah. And so that kind of started everything where it was like, okay, that one band came in now, you know, mm. I, I started occasionally booking bands and every time I booked a band, we get customers done. Yeah. We get new people coming in and, and everything. And then, so, you know, one one band every few weeks and then turn into a band you know once a week and mm -hmm. then and then we started to book i started to book some bigger bands i, I remember booking this um 
really i remember one of my regulars coming to me saying hey you know what you got to try and book this neil young tribute band they're called the yeah. neil youngins yeah and i was like okay so then i looked them up i phoned i phoned them up and said hey can you guys come in and they're like yeah sure it's going to cost you this amount and i was mm -hmm. like oh okay um all right and then i'm thinking to myself sure let's do it and i was thinking okay how am i gonna pay this band <laughs> and then what i ended up doing was i was like okay i'm gonna have to sell tickets to the show if, yeah. if you know if, if i'm gonna be able to pay this band that amount yeah so um so i started i i, I made i went to staples i i i, I made these tickets for at staples i uh, went around the neighborhood and put up posters and um and then that night the band came in and it was packed we sold like before the, the show started we sold a number of tickets people yeah. that we never seen before were coming buying tickets yeah and it was packed we had you know could pass 100 you know 30 140 people coming in to see this band and it was it was amazing it was such a cool feeling because this band was amazing really good and all these people were in drinking having a good time dancing singing along and like from then on it was like okay full steam ahead with with the music that was kind of a big turning point and then we started you know booking every weekend you know two bands every weekend and then four nights a week and then you know now we're booking we have shows pretty much five to seven nights a week yeah. and in fact yeah. now we're just a music venue we're not even yeah. we're not even a bar anymore like before we were open open during the days yeah for people to come in and drink or you know watch watch sports and stuff now now we're just open for shows we're just open so. for shows yeah well obviously yeah. the uh, the research that you did and, and again i'm not sure and and i pres i presume that you 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 guys live near did you grow up near the bar or no so um my dad grew up um on bastido yeah which okay. is Dan danforth and in, in yeah. coxwell yeah, really yeah, close nearby. by yeah. um yeah and I, I, we grew up, um, I grew up in the beaches. So in the beach. We okay. So close yeah, enough so. to basically close enough to prove my point that if you, if you're standing at the corner of Danforth and Woodbine at any point in the eighties, nineties, or the two thousands, you're probably going to hear at least one car driving by blasting Kim Mitchell. That was my, my scientific <laughs> theory. At least 80% of vehicles in East York are playing Kim Mitchell at any given time. Uh, probably the other 20% Neil Young, probably <laughs> April wine. So I think without you necessarily knowing that you, you sort of tapped into that with that Neil Young tribute uh, with all the, again, all the great bands that you've had, the, the, the rush, uh, the rush tribute uh, that, uh, that I went to or one of the shows I went to, they, oh, yeah, they, yeah. They, they were awesome. Uh, and then again, obviously, and then, and as we were discussing earlier on, on the, um, for the podcast, uh, is about the actual Max Webster tribute band, oh, which yeah. was the night after the show that I went to. Uh, and because, uh, and I went to the Stevie Ray Vaughan tribute, which by the way, that guy was awesome. And I brought my buddy who yeah. is the, I, I would call him the Toronto, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan aficionado. The guy actually has his own monogram guitar with his lettering at, you know, a la Stevie Ray Vaughan, like he did in his uh, guitars. Uh, and he had it, uh, he just had it serviced over at the 12th fret. Just down. Oh, the cool. Yeah. yeah. So this guy was the guy I, I said, if I'm going to bring anybody, I'm bringing him to just verify the authenticity of the, <laughs> of the guy. Of the band, and he yeah. was like, this guy's dead on. Like first thing he said, this guy's, he's, he's, he's got the notes. He's playing all the in-between stuff that Stevie would do. So he's even got the tattoo. He's got Stevie That's, Ray's tattoo. You mentioned, yeah, you mentioned that. <laughs> um, so that was an incredible show. Had an awesome night, you know, stayed yeah. out way too late for, for my old ass. Uh, and then I was thinking, oh, the next night is the Max Webster tribute, guys. Uh, that would be awesome because I've seen Max Webster uh, at one of the reunion shows. So I was yeah. dying to go see it. Just couldn't make it. And then go, go and figure who shows up. <laughs> yeah, Kim, Kim Mitchell, Mitchell himself. himself shows up on the Danforth, yeah. walks right in. People are taking pictures with him. So I see it the next day. Yeah. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I, I missed what could have been like what what if he had just jumped on the stage for a tune or two like what if uh yeah you know, the, the possibilities is what i'm i think that's what i'm getting to at this stage in the podcast um is of course what could happen on any given night you don't know 
Um, so obviously, yeah, you've been doing such a great job of promoting uh, all these great bands and, and getting all these guys in. And of course, um, what I'm hoping we're going we're gonna to be doing, if you guys are listening, uh, that uh, Ryan asked you suggested is that we might actually even be getting, I mean, I think some of the, maybe some of the acts, maybe, you know, one of the uh, yeah, you know, one of the yeah. one of the one of the uh, one of the musicians, maybe not the whole band, because that might be too much to ask. But maybe, you know, having one or two or three of the musicians once in a while, jump in and talk about their story. So there may be sort of their view from the stage sort of thing. I don't know what we're going to call it, but something like that. Yeah, there's definitely some really musicians are really cool people with with, you know, great stories and, and, and great, you know, great opinions the on the stuff. Storytellers. And, they're the and, best storytellers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. there's a lot of them. It's surprising. Like I didn't realize how many like amazing big name, like talented musicians that actually live in the hood, in the neighborhood. Yeah. Really yeah. close by. And it's, it's yeah. so cool that, that, that they do. And, you know, I think we're like the Linsmore, we're really lucky that, you know, we have these musicians in the area that will player place that will come by, you know, on, you know, one, one night they're playing a stadium, you know, an arena to 20,000 people. And then the next night, you know, they just want to play at their local bar and have some fun. And so they'll play at the Linsmore. So it's, 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 it's pretty cool. Who would you say just, again, we didn't rehearse this at all, but who would you say is the most famous person that walked through the doors that you were aware of? Um, Even if it's I, a well, rumor. Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like there's a few of them. Um, I, I, I did book. Okay. So the Dave Matthews band, I booked um, Boyd Tinsley, who's the, the violinist. He actually oh, yeah. played a show at the Linsmore. Nice. So that's, and he's from the States. So that was, that was pretty big. Yeah. Getting him in for a show. And that was surprising that. Yeah. Um, hmm. Like we, you know, we we have some big like that play frequently. Tim Bovacanti was the guitar player for yep. um, Burton Cummings. Burton Cummings, yeah, Randy yeah, Bach, you were mentioning Bachman, that. Yeah. He, he played. He's played probably 40, 40, 50 shows at our place. He's playing every every couple of months. Nice. Wild T. Tony Springer was a guitar player for David Bowie, and he was in a couple of weeks ago playing. Um, Dale Harrison drummer for the headstones and a number of different bands he, he's from the neighborhood he's played a, you know with probably 10 different bands at her place you know a lot of really yeah okay of, there, there's of, a yeah, couple a of, of uh there's yeah. a couple of very odd again this is music nerd stuff but there's actually a yeah. lot of headstones um specific uh trivia related to the danforth as well um yeah. and uh, one of my good friends uh, a comedian by the name of darren frost was mm. in one of their videos Oh, cool. Uh, a long time ago. So he was actually sort of one of the sort of the cult um, figures in one of their early videos. And he's a, he's a huge fan of that band. So um, go go figure how, you know, again, small world. And, and this yeah. has been the best part yeah. about music and comedians. Um, and this is why, again, podcasting, weirdly enough, is sort of the same way where collaboration um, is such a big deal. Like it's not, I, I'm not competing. I, I, there's, there's nobody for me to compete against as, as far as a podcast goes. I don't care who's bigger than me or who's just started yesterday. I don't give a shit about that. I would rather yeah. have a conversation with anybody. Uh, and for me, the best storytellers are again, always doors, always open, uh, which is why I wanted to have you and, 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 and possibly also, you know, your dad uh, to hear any sort of untold. Uh, yeah, we'll get him on. Possibly, we'll get him on. possibly illegal stories about uh, what, what happened in the olden days, but the, exactly. We'll have him on. He'll listen to this and he'll say, damn it. I wish I was there for the first one. Uh, and then yeah. we'll have him on for the next one. We'll, we'll, we'll make it interesting for, uh, I'll get him on. He's for him he, to join us. Yeah. He's a good storyteller. He'll tell some, some I'm sure some he, again, I mean, without knowing yeah. him again, I I've got, I've got the chance to again, meet you this way, the way we've been meeting, obviously, because uh, mm -hmm. again, you're where you are. I'm where I am. Uh, but of course, the connecting factor, as I said before, either of us could probably walk into any place in the world uh, to a band that we both like, and you could start talking to somebody about that band. And, and next thing you know, you're not strangers anymore. It's literally <laughs> like it's two minutes, you know, even white lion. <laughs> Absolutely, for white wine, as, as you know, um, and this is not even a joke, but the, the, one of my really good friends who's a bass player with a great band called Second Pass, 
which I don't know if they played your place yet, but they should. Um, him and me, we talk about White Lion, Vito Brada. We talk about that guy um, way too, you know, way unnaturally, like just, just way too yeah. often. Uh, but it's because of the fact that we're such big fans of the music. And yeah. Get my, uh, I guess I am getting my two minute warning here for the, for the podcast. Um, but there's so much, again, there's so much to, um, uh, to talk about. And obviously the one thing I'm going to be doing as well, uh, for the people in our local community, uh, we're going to be working on some new ideas that we talked about. I'm not going to release them right here, but we're going to sort of be, uh, launching some new, um, ideas to sort of help, um, boost the sort of the musical presence and the musical, uh, I guess just the, the, the celebration of the music. And this is why, uh, again, from as far as I'm concerned, I'm talking to, again, you know, the chance I got to talk to you today is, is to me is, uh, is so great because again, you're literally what's keeping uh, live music alive. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, like guys like you, there's not many of you, I, I'm pretty sure you'll agree. Um, there's not a lot of you guys left. So just keeping that live music thing going, uh, all these great bands, and obviously, I just, you know, I want to keep this going. So this is one of those podcasts that I would call a series, because we're going to be doing this, uh, you know, again, and, and again, having maybe a couple of more squares on the screen with a couple more people joining us and, and making it fun. But uh, I want to just thank you for your time today, Ryan. I know you're like a busy man, you got a wonderful family uh and you got you know you got yourself uh booking your place uh you know nonstop. so um i want to thank you for your time today thanks for joining me and by all means uh, again you've got uh you've got the golden key you, you're you're welcome back anytime to uh you know add add some more juicy stories as you remember them because you know we're, <laughs> we're, we're we're i'm in my late 40s you said you're in your early 40s uh yeah. sometimes we forget things uh, after having, you know, a lot of good years and a lot of parties, sometimes you forget the good <laughs> stories and it all of a sudden, oh yeah, I forgot about that story. I got to bring it up. So make sure, uh, you know, the next time we're, we're doing this, we'll, uh, you know, we'll add some of those stories to the mix. Sure. For sure. Thanks Paul for having me. And all right, brother. yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to do something with, uh, some listeners from the neighborhood. Uh, you know, you mentioned it, we mentioned it before we talked about it before, but a couple free tickets to some shows yeah, you know, every, yeah. every month. And, that's again, um, that's, that's something yeah. that, again, I definitely yeah. want to do more of. Um, so definitely going to be doing a bit more uh, sort, sort of sort of ramping up the um, the contest idea, sort of just something I, you know, sort of came up with to, to, to see what would happen. But I didn't really have sort of a plan this I think it's getting a little bit more organized. So hopefully, uh, we'll have something a bit more regular going and uh, uh, again, more storytelling, supporting the local music, uh, again, the, the huge local music element in the, in the community. Um, and of course, getting musicians to join yeah, us here. Because um, sure. again, musicians, comedians, um, and, and again, podcasters, and, and I'm trying to be one, which is again, obviously, you know, work in progress. But, um, you know, the great storytellers are, you know, the, I think the people who are capturing uh, people's attention these days. It's not just, you know, the guy on the screen with the, uh, you know, the, the slick background and the, uh, and the radio voice. Cause I got none of that. So what I do is I try to get, uh, you know, really interesting people around me, uh, and stuff that I want to talk about. And at the end of the day, some, for some reason, people like listening to that stuff and, uh, you know, I'm the same way. That's what I listen to stuff that interests me. So once again, thank you, Ryan, for joining me and we'll be uh, definitely doing this again soon. Yeah. Thank you, Paul, for having me. And I love what you're doing with it, with this podcast and, and, you know, all the, all the stuff that you're doing in the community on the Danforth. And, and it's, it, it's great. Like you're a, you're a key figure and, 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 in the hood, in the neighborhood. I, so. I appreciate that, man. I've been, yeah. I've been working at it for 24 years. So hopefully uh, one of these days it's going to, it's going to just, uh, I'll get it right. But for now, I'll just keep trying and uh, doing my best to uh, uh, trying to promote it and, and keep things going. But again, once again, thanks so much, Ryan. Appreciate your time. Yep. All right. Thanks.